Hi everyone, today we're going to be going over the highlights of maritime history, part 1, the origin of maritime traditions. The first maritime tradition we're going to be looking at is called the Bosun's Pipe. The Bosun's Pipe in the early days was known as the Whistle Command. It has its origins in the rowing galleys of ships that came from Greece. Although it may look like and sound a bit like a whistle, it's really a musical instrument. You can play different kinds of calls and notes on it. As you can see by the picture, you know, this is a big ship where the rowers have to coordinate. So um, verbal commands may be hard to hear over all the noise. So that's why they use the whistle. And um, in Sea Scouts, the pipe is only used by the bosun and crew leaders. So the skipper would issue an order verbally to the bosun. In turn, uses the pipe to pass down to the crew leaders. And then the crew leaders can either pipe the command or... Just verbally say it if it's close enough. Um, the bosun's pipe also indicates their office and um, transmit orders to their crew. Sea Scouts wear the bosun's pipe on a white lanyard since we have a dark uniform and it goes inside a left side pocket um, when you're not using it. So the bosun's pipe is worn on bosun's lanyard and Sea Scouts, the bosun's lanyard is made from a four strand Turk's head knot. Coach whipping, coxcombing, brown braid, flat center braid, walnut, and or crown knot. So the bosun's lanyard on the right, going from left to right. The first knot we see is a four strand Turk's head knot. Then we see a couple crown knots. And then another four strand Turk's head knot. And the last um, braid you see on the right is a round braid. So here's just a closer look. You're seeing the round braid right now. As we go down, we're going to see the first Turk's head knot right here. Then a couple crown knots, and then the last Turk's head knot. So in the Navy, the bosun's pipe and lanyard may be worn around the neck while carrying out official ceremonial duties and military watches. Um, the Navy does not wear them on liberty, and that means when they're on shore leave, they don't wear the bosun's pipe. So in the Navy... Same as Sea Scouts, when the bosun's pipe is not in use, it goes into the left pocket. So same as in Sea Scouts, when the Navy wears a dark uniform, they use a white lanyard. But the Navy also has a white uniform, so when they wear a white uniform, they use a black lanyard. So the next maritime tradition we're going to be going over is the double salute. In the early days of Christianity, it was the custom to place a statue of the Blessed Virgin or Crucifix on the main mast of the vessel. So everyone that boarded the vessel took off his hat and made the sign of the cross as a form of salute in the direction of the main mast. National flags became prominent in the 14th and 15th centuries. Ships of maritime nations soon began to fly their national ensign and requested that it be recognized also by the people boarding the ship. So the double salute became a universal rule as each person that boarded saluted both the main mast and his national ensign when coming aboard. And the ensign is just the national flag to, um, on the vessel to show where the vessel came from. So Sea Scouts do the double salute on all formal and official occasions. Whenever Sea Scouts come aboard a Sea Scout ship or a land ship, they perform two salutes. As they do this, they carry... They continued to carry out a custom of the sea that began centuries ago. So honoring these traditions, Sea Scouts immediately upon stepping aboard salute at first the center of the ship, which is a traditional salute to God, and then turn toward the flagstaff at the stern of the ship and perform the traditional salute to the ensign of our nation. So when going ashore or leaving the land ship, each person gives the double salute in reverse, first to the national ensign, and then to the main mast. So the Navy does the double salute in reverse, or I guess I should say the Sea Scouts do the double salute in reverse. The Navy salutes the ensign first, and then the officer of the deck. The next maritime tradition we're going to go over is piping the side. Centuries ago, when ships were under command dandies of the court, rather than people who knew what they were doing, these Worthies consider themselves too good to walk on board the ship or climb the gangway steps. Accordingly, a bosun and a detail of side boys were assigned to hoist them on board in the chair. 
the motions of the chair as they carefully lifted them and deposited them all standing on the core deck were controlled by the bosun's pipe with the cores host away, lower away, and secure. Here is an example of a gangway. Today, the term side boys is gender neutral and the duties are not as tough. When the ship skipper or other adult arrives at the ship for a formal visit, the honors are rendered. So like you can see in the photo, um, according to who it is, um, the Sea Scouts line up and salute the person coming aboard and the bosun whistles the correct calls. So there's um, no hoist in the chair involved. So the next tradition we're going to go over is boarding a Sea Scout ship, or any ship really. So when coming aboard a ship, you should ask permission to come aboard. If you're in a group, only the person in charge needs to request permission. And you know, this is like knocking before entering someone's house. It's just a polite thing to do. The origins comes from a Navy tradition for boarding ships. And that's going to cover all the maritime traditions we're going to go over today. Thanks for watching.